I do plan to fit solar panels, so I need to fit this entry gland. I figured out that I just need to use a 20 mil hole saw to create a hole over here that will take both 10 AWG cables. There we go. And there you have it, a solar entry gland dual cable fitted, took all of five minutes. Well I decided to order up some MC4 solar cable, let's insert this and then I can crack on with uh, the insulation in the ceiling. rain coming so I want to make sure these are tightened up just to protect those two cables I've put a rubber bung in there so they don't get chafed by the, the edge on the fiberglass roof I'm going to reattach the insulation to the roof using Trimfex right that just has to hold it in place the reason why I've opted to use cargo rails is because I want to be able to remove the solar panel fairly easily. If I bond the solar panel with mounts to the roof, I can't remove the solar panels. And I'm concerned that with the rush of air underneath, with only four fixing points, there'll be too much pressure on those points. Why? are Unwin T-bolts 11 pounds each. I would like to use six of these per solar panel. That's 66 pounds to mount a solar panel. And the solar panel didn't cost more than that. Now you do get T-slot nuts like this. In fact, you get T-slot T-bolts like that for T-slot rails. Just need to take the corners off so that it fits into that oval shaped slot like that. Perfect. So I've got to position these exactly where I need to mount the side. Let's pretend this is a solar panel. I need to slightly bend these surface mount rails to take the curve of the roof. Bosch basic jigsaw blades do not like to cut aluminium. Bosch metal jigsaw blades love to cut aluminium. So those are cut to length now and I will now need to shape them and give them a little bit of a curve to make them fit the roof. Then I will attach them to the solar panel, apply some Sikaflex, clean the roof, drop the solar panel assembly on there. So you can see the, the rubber spacer that I'm using here to accommodate the curve in the cargo rails. So you have to tighten that down and it forces the curve. And then I can just then tighten the rubber one down. make sure I've got the right curve.
I need to make a little spacer to fill this gap between this bracket and the roof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut myself a spacer out of this and then this will get bonded to the roof. And there you have it. I have applied the Sikaflex in copious amounts to the spacer and the side rails. That is the first solar panel fitted. So I've got the strap going over the top of it there, which is attached to the underside of the van. So that's just holding it in just in place, not forcing it down because I want a bit of a gap between the aluminium and the roof for the Seeker Flex to form its bond. Now, let's do the back one. Unfortunately, rain has stopped play yet again. Anyway, let me show you what I've done. I've got two solar panels on the roof. Let's have a look at that. Look at that. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So what I've done here is taken a piece of uh, polycarbonate sheet and I've marked out a wind deflector that I'm going to cut out of this. So yeah, I need to cut this curve into it so it sits flush with the roof and with the top of the solar panel. Let's see if we can uh, stop the wind from getting in underneath there when we're driving at 75. Oops, I mean 70. So I've fashioned a little angle bracket and then that will support the wind deflector from the center and hold it at the correct angle. And there we have it. The wind deflector is in place and currently the seek effects is maturing and that will create a good bond hopefully between the solar panel and the wind deflector and the wind deflector and the roof. Happy days! If you like this video give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, stick around for the next video. Thanks for watching, happy days!